one of our headline stories right now. Well, they were first charged with possession of arms and ammunition without license, but that has changed. And now Dr. Frederick, uh, Frederick Yao Makpom and eight others face the charge of treason, the highest crime against the state. The alleged coup plotters were arrested last month during a joint security operation um, that led to the retrieval led to the retrieval of several arms and if you've been following the story there the council continues to insist that they are being framed they were there, there was also the retrieval of um, explosive devices and ammunition from locations in Accra and Pumbawalishi in Dodua uh, the state prosecutor today alleged that the men including a serving military officer intended to engage in series of demonstrations geared at toppling the government ASB Sylvester Sari justified um, the reason why they have to be kept in custody. Joseph Akable joins me. He was in court today. He joins me in studio with more on this. Hello, Joseph. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, tell us what, how it all went down in court today. And so uh, first, you know that uh, the individuals were taken to court mm -hmm. on three different occasions. So first, there were three persons who were charged, including Dr. Mark Palm. And later on, uh, they took two persons that included uh, the senior military officer the colonel and a civilian employee of the military then on the third occasion they took six individuals so that brought the number to 11 okay. persons who have been taken on different occasions so they were all charged on different documents now when we went over today the first case was called the state prosecutor withdrew the charge sheet mm -hmm. they were discharged which is the charge involving the um, uh, am possession am of am ammunition yes. and mm -hmm. so when that case was called he withdrew the charge sheet they were discharged but they were not allowed to leave the court. They were kept in the courtroom. They called the second case. They withdrew that charge sheet as well. They were discharged. They sat down. The third case that was done. Then a new charge sheet was filed. Mm -hmm. And in that new charge sheet, the number was reduced to nine. And so they are. As two, of the 11 who were. As of the 11 that arrested. were put in before the court. Okay. And so we understand the two individuals. Investigations currently suggest that the two persons are not part of those who are plotting to destabilize the country, as we have been told. Okay. And so the charges have been dropped against them. Who are these two people, f first of all? And so uh, I will just quickly just get you the names of these two individuals. Okay. But there are two soldiers mm. uh, who were the pe part of the individuals who were put before the court. Right. And so the first person is uh, Lance Corporal Godwin Ni Ankra. And mm. the other is also a Lance Corporal. His name is Albert Baba Ibrahim. Okay. And so those are the two individuals who uh, were part of the making the number of 11, 11. who were charged. And this time around, the two have been left. And so the other nine persons who have been charged, I'll run you through the names quickly. Okay. And so first is uh, Frederick Yao Makpam, mm -hmm. uh, who we know is a legal practitioner. There is also... No, he's a doctor. Uh, it's a doctor, yes, yeah. a doctor, I beg your pardon, medical practitioner. Yeah. Uh, there is also Donyo Kafui, a.k.a. Ezo. Mm -hmm. There is Bright Alan Debra. Uh, there is Colonel Samokojo Gameli. Uh, who is a soldier? There's Geshon Akpa, who we are told is a civilian employee okay. of the Ghana Armed Forces. And quickly, before you go on, uh, the, I see a gentleman um, being held or being carried away. Maybe he's one of the two mm. individuals who were discharged today. Who were discharged. Yes. And he seems uncontrollable. Yes, there. So what, he, what's he broke into tears of joy, like we, we describe it, mm. uh, after uh, he had been informed by his lawyers and explained to him that. Uh, the case against him has been dropped. Has been dropped. And this is uh, Godwin or um, That's Al Godwin. Albert? That's Godwin. That's Godwin. Yes. He, was he the one who was initially, I mean, the first time they went to court, he broke down as well. Was that the individual? Yes, he, he was part of it. He yes. was uh, part of I, I beg, I, I, Sorry to have interrupted. I didn't want us to miss that, miss that moment. Okay. So go so ahead. So there is the also a warrant officer to Esther uh, San mm -hmm. Dequine, and there is Corporal Seydou Abubakar, Lance Corporal Ali Solomon, mm -hmm. and finally Lance Corporal Sylvester Akpamewon. So these are the individuals who uh, the charges of conspiracy to commit crime, namely treason felony. That's the first charge. There is also mm -hmm. that of treason felony. Then there is conspiracy to commit crime, namely possession of explosive arms and ammunition without lawful excuse. Mm -hmm. And the final uh, one being possession of explosives and arms uh, and ammunition without lawful excuse. And so those are the charges against Are them. we looking at four charges so here? Four charges against Four them. charges here involving 
Um, so two has to do with uh, treason, that has to do with a conspiracy and a treason felony itself. Okay. And the other two relates to the possession of arms, arms. and ammunition, okay. conspiracy and the possession itself. Well, yeah, well, the lawyer has been speaking to you yes, as well. Yes, yeah, he maintains that his clients have been framed. What I'm satisfied with is that the court is making it clear to our security agencies and the prosecution that you can't keep clients and at your own crimes and caprices the way you treat them. Is there a liberty? And if the BNI and their people think that they operate their own law and not under the law of Ghana, the court has reinforced and says that. Listen, you are becoming too notorious for this. And, you know, the court detests that. So that's why the court said, I will remand them in the BNI custody again. But the court said, yes, it makes sense if the three investigative agencies, we put the others, the military officers, at the military custody and the others within the police custody. This will give them access to their families, to their lawyers, and I think for me, that is very good. Again, um, it was in the process of the court proceedings that we have been told that it is all about starting a committal proceedings, that the court says that if that is it, it will not take their plea. So if it is the committal proceedings they are starting, yes, they have time max. They will do what they are supposed to do and get back to us. However, their liberty is at stake. Well, that's a lawyer that will do there. He represents the men, uh, nine of them now, who have been charged uh, with treason, conspiracy to commit treason, and uh, possession of arms without lawful excuse. Joseph, there's more uh, details uh, that emerged today. Tell us. Yes, so it relates to the plot that the state alleges they were engaged in. Uh, the state says that at one of their meetings, uh, they had a map which was a site plan of various installations and facilities that they wanted to take over and so uh, one is the jubilee house uh, that we know is the seat of government uh, there's also the ghana broadcasting corporation the state broadcaster like we all know there is 37 military hospital is one of the leading medical facilities in the country there's the national police training school where as the name suggests where police officers are mm. trained then there's Bema camp and so we are told that these are, are the facilities or places that the individuals mm. were planning that they were going to take control of if they follow through with their plan. I see. So are these the only uh, the only new information emerging? There's again a bit about an um, AK-47 that was being sold uh, to the, doc the doctor. We are told that there were uh, two AK-47s at a cost of 7,000 CDs. And we are told that some part payment that was made about 2,000 CDs of the 7,000 CDs uh, was advanced to the gentleman who was producing the weapon. We are told that the female officer who is part of uh, this particular the person who have been charged was asked to recruit other soldiers to join the plot mm. yes so that's her role what happens next uh, we are going back on october 28 but earlier there was this video that we played mm -hmm. of someone pouring a libation yes i'm sure the production team could yes that. yes uh, so what what, what, what was what yes. was up with that libation and so this is uh we are told it's a family member of uh, one of the accused persons mm. uh they we understand they are associated with the take action ghana group they said they came okay. over to pour uh, libation because mm -hmm. uh, they believe that their family members have done nothing wrong and so they are invoking they said the gods of alavano and some other areas in the volta region asking that any individual who comes to bear false testimony against their family members who have been charged mm. uh, they expect the gods to deal with them i asked what they mean by that but they said they expect their gods to deal with them mm. and were they were they were, they were not prevented in any way no from doing no, no what, one stopped them the no police stopped officers them only all. paid attention to accused persons who have been let out of the courtroom mm. well but would you would you will you be able to explain to us describe to us their demeanor when they came to court today uh they were they were, they were largely i mean apart from calm. godwin who was yes crying. they were in terms of the others who are still in custody and still facing trial they were largely calm uh, as they left it's dr mac palm who when he entered the bus he's the most vocal among them when he was in the bus he was still shouting to us that he has done nothing wrong, he has done nothing wrong like he did on the previous occasion, and that we can go ahead and film him. There's another directive coming from the courts too. They used to be in the BNI custody, and the magistrate is saying that they should be moved from the BNI custody because she gave an order that their lawyers and family members should be allowed to see them, and we are told the BNI officials were not obeying that strictly. Okay. They were sometimes not allowing them, sometimes they were giving them a few minutes than they were allotted to. Mm. And mm. so because of that, they've been asked to move them 
to prison custody. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting details there. We'll be following up on that story to bring you more. Joseph Akable is our court correspondent. He's been in court following the uh, proceedings and brought us up to speed.